Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of multiplying and dividing rational expressions. First, let's review the steps. We want to rewrite any division as multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. So if we have a over b divided by c over d, this is equivalent to a over b times d over c. So we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Factor all numerators and all denominators when possible. Look for common factors in the numerator and denominator. Rewrite all remaining factors as one fraction. And now I said look for common factors in the numerator and denominator and we want to cancel out any common factors. So we're gonna say look and cancel out. And then whatever's left, we rewrite as one fraction. I My general rule of thumb is to leave your final answer in factored form rather than creating extra steps, but you should talk to your instructor about what their preference is. Okay, let's get started with our first example. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, I see this division, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal, so we're going to flip this fraction. So this would give us, I'm just gonna rewrite it here, we're gonna have x squared minus xy minus 6y squared over x squared minus 9y squared, and that's going to replace this, and this is going to be a time sign now. Okay, so now we're going to have to factor all six parts, the three numerators and the three denominators. Starting with the top left numerator, I have x squared minus 8xy plus 16y squared. Okay, so this is going to be target product is 16, target sum is negative 8. It's going to be x minus 4y. It would actually be x minus 4y squared, but I'm going to write them separate just so that way if one of them happens to be a common factor with anything in the denominator, it's a little bit easier to simplify. x squared minus 4y squared, that's a difference of squares, so that's going to be root minus root times root plus root. Okay, in this middle, we have x squared minus 6xy plus 8y squared. Um, that would be a target product of 8, target sum of negative 6, that's going to be x minus 4y times x minus 2y. And then in the denominator, look at this. We have x minus 4y quantity squared. Then over here, we have x squared minus xy minus 6y squared. That would be, let's see, negative 6 and negative 1 would be negative 3 and positive 2. So x minus 3y and x plus 2y. And x squared minus 9y squared, that's a difference of squares, that's going to be x minus 3y times x plus 3y. Okay, now in the very beginning I said, oh, let's not worry about putting the square there. And look at that, we have two factors of x minus 4y. We have two factors of x minus 4y, so we could have actually written it with the square. What else do I see? I see a common factor of x minus 2y here and here. x minus 3y here and here. x plus 2y here and here leaving me with one factor in the numerator and one factor in the denominator that cannot be simplified. So we end up with x minus 4y in the numerator and in the denominator x plus 3y. And thus, this is completely simplified. How about our last example? Okay, if we see division, we're going to rewrite that as multiplication. So that's that middle term. I'm going to put the middle terms reciprocal over here. We're going to multiply by 25t squared minus 1 over 9 t squared minus 4. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to just cross that one out. And now we're going to simplify all six numerators and denominators. And notice that I moved that division slash multiplication to the end. The commutative property tells me that I'm allowed to do that. I'm not changing anything, right? All the factors are still where they should be. I just switched its location. Okay, so here we have 3t squared minus 7t minus 6. If you need to do target product target sum for this, that's fine. The target product for this one will be 3 times negative 6, which is negative 18, and the target sum is negative 7. So two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add up to negative 7, that would be negative 9 and positive 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the minus 7t with negative 9t and 2t, giving me 3t squared minus 9t plus 2t minus 6. Now that I have four terms, I can factor by grouping. Pull out the GCF, so this is going to be 3t times t minus 3. Here the GCF is 2 
and what I'm left with is t minus 3. So now I have a GCF of these two terms of t minus 3 times 3t plus 2. Okay, so all that just to say that that top left is going to factor into t minus 3 times 3t plus 2. How about right underneath it? Right underneath it looks like, looks like it's going to be a lot of work too. So we have 20t squared minus 21t minus 5. This one will have a target product of 20 times negative 5, which is negative 100. And the target sum is negative 21. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 100 and add up to negative 21. 100 does have a lot of factors, but just thinking this through, I'm pretty sure that the winning combination is negative 25 and positive 4. So with that winning combination, we're going to replace negative 21t with negative 25t plus 4t. So we get 20t squared minus 25t plus 4t minus 5. Grouping our first two terms, grouping our second two terms. The first grouping, we have a common factor of 5t. Leaving behind, dividing by 5t, we get 4t minus 5. The second grouping has a GCF of 1. So we're going to factor out our GCF of 1, which isn't going to do anything. And I like writing the 1 just because that way it shows me that I have something left over when I pull out that GCF of 4t minus 5. So this becomes 4t minus 5 times 5t plus 1. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this as 4t minus 5 times 5t plus 1. Okay, next, ah, we have more. We have 12t squared minus 19t plus 5. I'm going to need a little more space, I think. So for this one, we have 12t squared minus 19t plus 5. The target product is 12 times 5, which is 60. And the target sum is negative 19. It's that middle coefficient. Two numbers that multiply to positive 60. So we know we're dealing with two positives or two negatives and add up to negative 19, okay, two negatives, would be, can you think of the winning combination? Negative 15 and negative 4. We're going to replace negative 19t with negative 15t and negative 4t, giving me 12t squared minus 15t minus 4t plus 5. I want to be really careful here when I group because of that negative 4t. I'm actually going to write it as plus negative. And now we're going to factor out the greatest common factors. Um, 12 and 15 have a common factor of 3. t squared and t have a common factor of t. That would leave 4t minus 5 inside the parentheses. Negative 4t and 5 don't have a common factor, but I do want that first term to be positive. So I'm going to factor out a minus 1. So we're going to say minus 1. What all that's going to do is it's going to change the signs, giving me 4t minus 5. Why did I do that, you may ask? Well, because now these two terms have a GCF of 4t minus 5. So this will leave me with 4t minus 5 times 3t minus 1. Okay, so up here we have 4t minus 5 times 3t minus 1. In the denominator, uh, I'm really going to squeeze in here, aren't I? In the denominator we have 5t squared minus 16t plus 3. In this case, the target product is 5 times 3, which is 15. And the target sum is that middle coefficient, negative 16. Two numbers that multiply to positive 15 and add up to negative 16 would be negative 15 and negative 1. So we're going to expand. We're going to replace negative 16t with negative 15t and negative 1t. So it's 5t squared minus 15t minus 1t plus 3. I'm going to just change that middle one so that way when I factor by grouping, I don't have anything weird going on. We want to make sure that we're doing this mathematically sound. And now we're going to pull out GCFs. 5t squared and 15t have a GCF of 5t, leaving behind t minus 3. And then here we're going to factor out that negative 1 um, just to change the sign. So we're going to say minus 1. That's going to give me positive t and negative 3. Now these two terms have a GCF of t minus 3 times 5t minus 1. Okay, so we have t minus 3 and 5t minus 1. The good news about this last uh, 
expression is that they're both differences of squares, so I don't need to show a bunch of work because I know that differences of squares will always factor into root minus root times root plus root. So this will be 5t minus 1 times 5t plus 1. And in the denominator, we have 3t minus 2 times 3t plus 2. We did it, guys. Well done. Okay, now comes the fun part, finding those common factors to cancel. We've got t minus 3 and t minus 3, 5t plus 1 and 5t plus 1, 3t plus 2 and 3t plus 2. What else? 4t minus 5 and 4t minus 5. 5t minus 1 and 5t minus 1. Okay, what do we have left? In the numerator, totally ran out of space here. I'm going to put it all the way at the top. In the numerator, we have 3t minus 1. In the denominator, we have 3t minus 2. And that's it. That is our final answer. 3t minus 1 over 3t minus 2. Thank you for bearing with me as we looked at this very long example. These have been examples of multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Thank you for stopping by.